Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome us once more to this beautiful Sunday morning. And as we go about our worship, we pray for the spirit-filled worship in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray once more as we meditate on God's word. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you that you have given us grace to see this new day, and not just a new day, but a day of rest and worship. We ask that you will guide us even this day. We also pray that as we hear you this morning, you may speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. We are looking at a topic that says, telling this resurrection story. Telling the resurrection story. Our text is Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 1. Luke 24, reading from verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the, the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And there was seems to them as I do tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Today is first Sunday after Easter. And the resurrection that we just celebrated, and we are still in the celebration mood, is still fresh in our hearts. Telling the resurrection story. Now, Jesus died and was buried, and his tomb was guarded, eh, guarded by soldiers who appointed to make sure that he was not stolen, and by his disciples. I miss the story that he was going to rise again, as Jesus already says. Jesus eventually defied the security and rose again with the soldiers as the only eyewitnesses. The soldiers who kept and watched were the only people who could have told the story, all that had happened. But you know what happened? They were bribed. Thank God for the angels who waited to tell the story. Then came Mary and her friends in continuation of their service to Christ their Lord, only to meet an empty tomb. And while being perplexed, two angels appeared and said to them, He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. That is our faith. He is alive. He is risen. That is our faith. He is not here. He is no more in the grave. He is alive. That is our story, and that is the story. Jesus is alive. The women left immediately and began to tell the story. It was not to be kept. It was not to be reserved. 
it was not to be postponed or done by procrastination. I will say, I, I go, tomorrow I will go and tell them, no, no. The Bible said they left immediately, straightway, they went to the apostles and the other rest of the disciples and told them all that happened. And the names of these women were there. But the Bible says, oh, the women's story, women's story, you know, uh, we don't, don't take them serious. They must be joking. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb and saw things himself. Now, the bane of Christianity, of many Christians today, is sharing their Christianity, sharing their Christian faith. You are asked to tell the story. There are many Christians on our pews who had never told anybody one day that Jesus loves him or her. You've gone through schools, you've gone through, and you've been Christian, wonderful Christian for years, yet you have no story to tell. You have nobody to share your faith with. You have nobody to tell that Jesus saved, that Jesus is alive. Yet, you can hear many people telling you their own stories. When will you start telling yours? Now, in telling the good news, you don't tell what you hear, but what you see and experienced. The women told what they saw. We saw the, em the, tomb, the tomb empty. We saw the angel. This is what they told us. And Peter, who would not want to believe the story of the women, had to run to the tomb to see things himself so that he can have a first-hand information. That is the experience. Now, in telling the good news, you tell your story, what you see and experience, which Apostle Paul puts in this way, that which we had seen, which, we have, which, we have, uh, which our eyes have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. They were not telling stories and tell, told by somebody. It's something they saw, something they handled, something they experienced, according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. We have many of our people who don't have experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. What is your religion? I'm a Christian. Many of us are Christians by birth. Many of us are Christians by baptism. Christians by confirmation. We are not Christians by experience. We have not met. We are, there is no encounter. We have not met with the Lord Jesus like Paul did on the way to Damascus. And that is why we have nothing to share. Nobody ever met with Jesus keeps quiet. As many that have come in contact with Jesus we always see them burning with zeal. They want to tell the story. They want another person to hear. They want another person to be touched. That's why people like Paul wouldn't stay. Even if he, it means death, he was ready to die. He has to tell the story. Why many of us are silent is because we have no story to tell. We have nothing to share. We have nothing. The story is very simple. He is risen. He is risen. That is all. He is risen. Jesus made it simpler when he sent his disciples in Luke chapter 10. He said, tell them, the kingdom of God is among you, or the kingdom of God is near. Very simple. And he said, tell the, heal the sick and do all other that. But the first message is, the kingdom of God is near. Have you told somebody such story? The second part says, what do you say I am? When Jesus asked them in Matthew chapter 16, you know, remember, who do you say I am? Who is Jesus to you? Is Jesus the prophet, the healer? In Matthew 16, Jesus will ask his disciples, who do people say I am? The opinions of men does not matter in Christian faith. What matters is your own conviction. What is your conviction about Christ? Tell your own story out of your own experience and encounter. Though you may not be believed, as Mary and her friends were not believed by the disciples and other apostles. But that is not strange. It's not strange for somebody not to hear you. It's not strange if somebody doesn't believe you or believe your Christian story. Believe, oh, I was a sinner now. I was a thief. Now I am no longer a thief. I was a liar. But Jesus has sent, set me free. Tell the resurrection story. Tell somebody that Jesus saves. But whether you are believed or not, it's not an issue. Isaiah we ask this question, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
He had no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. According to Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 and 2. So the story of the resurrection, even though today, you remember what happened in the book of Acts, when Paul was speaking at the Areopagus in Acts chapter 17, the, you know, dis discussing with the philosophers and uh, by the time he spoke, they were listening. And as soon as he came to the resurrection, that Jesus died and rose again, they say, oh God, we have had you, we have had you. Thank you very much for this, your wonderful piece. It was very interesting, but we are going to hear you next time. Because they don't, have, they don't believe in the resurrection story. But you don't, they don't have to believe. What is of greatest importance is tell the story. Share your faith with your neighbors. Share it with the people around you. Tell them how Jesus has touched your life, how Jesus has ministered to you, how Jesus has saved you. That is what makes evangelism very, very simple. You preach today, people don't repent because we have no story, we have no experience to back up, no testimony about our repentance. We grow in the church, born in the church, baptized as infant, confirmed. Is that all that makes a Christian? No, sir, no, man. That is not all. What makes a Christian is experience, your personal encounter. What encounter have you had with the Lord Jesus? This encounter is what changes another person. When I see a thief, I tell, oh, look, that you're stealing is small. Do you know the one I stole? You are still making picking pockets. We carry guns. And no, that you say, eh, and Jesus saved us. Ah, that is a story. He said, so you mean Jesus can save me too? He said, yes, he can. That is the story. I was a fornicator, but Jesus saved me. I was a liar, but Jesus saved me. That is the story. But because we have no encounter, we have no experience, we have nothing to tell. And again, we'll be afraid that they may not hear us. Like I said earlier, they don't have to hear us because Isaiah already made us know that the story is not all that sweet to hear. Yes, there is no attraction to it. There is nothing, there is no, and that is why a lot of people are coating the, co they coat it, you know, like sugar. After baking your cake, you coat it with sugar. A lot of preachers today coat the truth. They coat the gospel so that people can accept it. No, you don't coat it. Tell it the way it is. He is risen. He is not here. As simple as that. Tell the story. Share the gospel the way it is. Tell it how it is and not coat it. We pray that God will give us the grace to share the story. Even when the soldiers were bribed not to tell the truth, yet the story of the women transformed the entire world, which was confirmed by Peter, who ran. And then, of course, Jesus had to visit his disciples from time to time to prove to them that he was alive indeed. Yes. Had Jesus appeared to you? Why keep it to yourself? Tell it to another and let God be glorified. I pray that as we go on about our worship today, that God will indeed bless us and, and accept our sacrifices of praise. Father, we thank you once more for yet another opportunity given to us to hear you. We pray in your mercy that you grant us grace to tell the story, to share our faith, to share our belief, to share our experiences with the people around us. Because your word has said that the knowledge of God should fill the earth, even as water covers the sea. May we receive grace today to tell the stories. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com